Hey, how's it going, everyone? Bass here. So the Packers have just released their initial 53-man roster a couple minutes ago. So in this video, I want to go over and break down everything about the roster. It took them a while to announce the official roster. We're waiting on like two or three cuts to happen for a couple hours here. Um, obviously, the Packers always release stuff really, really late, but it finally is out. All right, so let's bring up the screen here. I'm going right off the Packers website. As I said, they did just release this, and we'll just start from the top and go all the way down to the bottom. So as we see at quarterback here, uh, nothing has changed change. Obviously, Aaron Rodgers and Jordan Love here, and they have released Danny Etling. There's no surprise there. That's what we all expected, just going into the season with two quarterbacks. And then at running back, they did decide to go with two running backs here, Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon. Earlier in the day, I released a video, and it was basically the early cuts, and Tyler Goodson was one of them. In that, I stated it would make sense you know, to keep Patrick Taylor just because of his pass blocking uh, prowess, his ability on special teams. They decided to keep no one other than Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon, which I guess also does make sense. You see they cut Patrick Taylor, Ty Patrick Taylor, excuse me, Tyler Goodson, Dexter Williams, and PUP is Kylan Hill. Now, if they needed a third running back come game day, they could either A, use Amari Rodgers, or B, they're going to elevate someone from the practice squad. I would assume Tyler Goodson and or Patrick Taylor will be brought back to the practice squad. Therefore, on week one, they can elevate a certain amount of practice squad players. I'd assume one of the running backs will be that. As for wide receiver, this one I nailed to a T. Seven wide receivers here. Al Lazard, Randall Cobb, Sammy Watkins, Amari Rogers, Christian Watson, Romeo Dobbs, and Samore Torre with releasing Juwan Winfrey, Travis Fulgham, and waving slash injured Ishmael Hyman. I've been saying this, for, I think, for honestly past few months now. Ever since they drafted some moratoria, I really liked what I saw on tape from Nebraska and Montana, and I said this guy has a lot of skill. I was surprised he fell to the seventh round, and I pretty much said, hey, I expect this guy to make the roster. There was a lot of hype with Juwan Winfrey over this training camp, Aaron Rodgers speaking him up, him performing well in the training camp, and Juwan Winfrey didn't do anything wrong. It's just... Samora Torre is a rookie. He was just drafted. He has more potential and upside and has the ability to get claimed more so than I think Juwan Winfrey, Juwan Winfrey would if they were to put him um, subject to waivers like they did. So I would expect Juwan Winfrey to come back um, on practice squad, and I also expect Fulgham to as well. But as I said... I guess they were going to go seven receivers, and they did exactly that with Samore Torre. I know a lot of people thought it would be Winfrey over Torre. I just like the upside and potential, like I said, with Samore Torre. Um, obviously, he's not going to get a ton of offensive snaps this year at all, unless a ton of injuries happen, but I like keeping him on the roster. As for tight end, they decided to keep four, and I guess this one to a T as well. Mercedes Lewis, Robert Tunyon, Josiah DeGuara, and Tyler Davis. And as I said yesterday's video and this morning's video, you guys may not like it, but Tyler Davis, I was saying he's going to make the roster just based on special teams, that fourth tight end, you're going to use him for special teams. You're not really going to be using that guy for offense. So this makes sense. They release Sal Canella and then wave slash injured Nate Becker and Elise Bat Mack. Moving on to the offensive line, I missed one player here on my prediction. They decided to go 10 instead of 9. Matt LaFleur has gone 9 offensive linemen the last three years. That's why I decided to do that. But they went David Bakhtiari, Elton Jenkins, John Runyon, Josh Myers, Royce Newman, Josh Nyman, Jake Hansen, Zach Tom, Sean Ryan, Rasheed Walker. So I didn't think they're going to keep Rasheed Walker. So in this initial 53, Gutekunst has kept every single draft pick. I expected a couple of the seventh round guys to potentially not make it, get placed on the practice squad. That is not the case. They decided to go with Rasheed Walker here, who only played in one preseason game and a handful of snaps, but looked really good in that final game. Sadly, they have released Caleb Jones, who looked really good all of preseason. And really, if this was swapped and Caleb Jones was the seventh round draft choice and Rasheed Walker was the undrafted free agent, Caleb Jones would be on this 53-man roster. I fully expect this guy to get back to the practice squad as long as no other team claims him. I fully want him to be on the practice squad. Caleb Jones deserves that. He could be the next potential Josh Nyman, the route he went to make it to the active roster and a, a potential starter in years to come. And then Michael Minette here as well, they decided to release. Moving on to the defensive side of things and defensive line, um, I thought they were going to keep six, but I thought the six was going to be Jack Heflin. So they decided to keep Kenny Clark, Dean Lowry, Jaron Reed, TJ Slayton, Devontae Wyatt, those five, those were all locks. The six they decided to keep with Jonathan Ford. And again, I think it's just like the Rasheed Walker thing. It's because he was drafted in the seventh round. Jack Heflin and Chris Slayton, in my opinion, played better than Jonathan Ford. I believe Ford was the lowest rated PFF um, grade among all Packers this preseason. So uh, it's solely just because... Gutekunst drafted him. He believes in his potential and his development, which I understand. So they kept six with Jonathan Ford. I would expect Heflin and Slayton to potentially both 
be on the practice squad and then they wave injured Akil Byers. As for edge, this was a position I surprisingly got 100% right considering this was one of the most confusing and hard ones to predict. Preston Smith, Rashawn Gary, Tipa Naliai, Kingsley Anakbare, and Jonathan Garvin. A lot of people thought, hey, Kobe Jones could make this roster. Ladarius Hamilton could make this roster. All these back-end guys got snaps with the number one defense throughout training camp, throughout preseason. A lot of these guys had high moments, and then they all kind of fizzled out. Tipo Nalai was inactive the last preseason game. That told me, okay, they believe Nalai is a lock. He's on the roster. So I knew, for the most part, he was going to make it. Kingsley and Agbar, I think, was 100% a lock. Came down to if they were going to keep five. And in that, in that regard, I thought they were. And with Jonathan Garvin, due to his experience, he has three years experience in the league, yet he's younger than both Kobe Jones and Ladarius Hamilton. So I guess kind of thought something right there. And Jonathan Garvin was the fifth edge player. As for inside linebacker, this was probably the easiest one to guess. Uh, the four here was Devondre Campbell, Quay Walker, Chris Barnes, and Isaiah McDuffie cutting Ray Wilburn and Ty Summers. Cut Ty Summers last week. Uh, Ray Wilburn was on this roster up until about uh, as the this official thing released so a lot of people thought are they going to keep five linebackers and obviously they did not they did decide to cut Ray Wilburn who's been pretty good at inside linebacker the past couple of years in training camp and preseason but this linebacker room is stacked with the first four guys I don't think there's any need to keep five obviously Devondre Campbell Quay Walker the starters Chris Barnes that second string linebacker but a you know, starter quality guy and Isaiah McDuffie seemingly making that second year jump really hype for this inside linebacker room. I love the depth. They're just stacked there. As for cornerbacks, I got this one wrong thinking they were going to keep six. They ended up keeping five. I don't think the Packers have kept five cornerbacks in a very, very long time, but obviously the way the roster is structured now with the elevations on practice squad before game day, it allows you to be a little bit more lenient with the numbers at certain positions. And that's exactly what they did with cornerback. Jair Alexander, Eric Stokes, Russell Douglas, Sean Nixon, and Shamar Jean Charles. I feel like these five were always locks to make the roster, so the Packers just kept those five. They have released Rico Gafford, KB Ento, and Keandre Thomas. I thought they might have kept Rico Gafford for the ability of special teams, but that's just not the case. They decided to cut all three of those cornerbacks, but I would expect Keandre Thomas and Rico Gafford to come back on the practice squad. As for safety, they kept five, and this is the one I probably got the most wrong, and for the right reasons. Adrian Amos, Darnell Savage, Donald Levitt, Tariq Carpenter, and Micah Abernathy. They have released Devontae Cross and Wave injured Sean Davis and Ennis Gaines, and I don't think any of us thought Sean Davis would have been waived. Uh, it was due to that knee injury. If he didn't suffer that injury, he'd 100% be on this roster. Just a really tough break for a guy who's been healthy all of training camp, all of preseason, and has performed pretty well and was kind of set up to be that third safety. So real unfortunate there. Um, if he doesn't clear waiver, waivers, he'll go back to the Packers IR. But the big story here, they kept Micah Abernathy, former USFL player, pretty much brought in as a camp body after injury suffered to Tariq Carpenter, Don Levitt, and his gains, Vernon Scott. There was a bunch of injuries to safeties. They brought him in just as a camp body, and he produced. I thought he played really well in the two preseason games there, and he deserved to be on this 53-man roster. I, I think, like I said, he played really well. I wanted him to be on this roster. I just didn't think there would be enough room, nor would the Packers keep five safeties. Obviously, I was wrong in both of those regards because they did decide to keep Mike Abernathy, so really happy that he did make this 53-man roster. And I also thought they weren't going to uh, keep Tariq Carpenter because I don't really see him as a safety. I see him as that hybrid linebacker safety role and I just didn't really find a spot for him in this 53-man roster. But obviously, Gutekunst did. Gut drafted him. He wanted to keep him on this roster. That much is apparent. He will be a special teams player for you know the first couple of years in his career, in my opinion. But that's not a problem to have. As for special teams, everyone could have guessed this. The only problem was, is Mason Crosby going to be activated? He was activated off the PUP at the deadline today, signaling that he will be ready for week one. Specialists go as Mason Crosby, Pat O'Donnell, and Jack Coco. And then they have released kicker Ramiz Ahmed I fully expect them to bring him back to the practice squad um, just in case you know uh, Mason Crosby isn't ready to go week one they can at least elevate him and have him kick because he's been in the building he's 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 kicked well since coming here uh, so he could definitely be a backup option or a reserve kicker there but that is the initial 53-man roster for the Green Bay Packers for the upcoming 2022 season nothing really crazy here no wows everything was kind of to be expected with a little differences here and there there was no wow cuts like Josh Sitton years ago or anything of that sort. So nothing crazy. I wanted Tyler Goodson to make the roster. It didn't happen. A lot of people thought Juwan Winfrey would make the roster. 
it didn't happen. And then Brian Gutekunst kept a lot of these back-end seventh-round rookies, which makes sense. Uh, a couple guys I thought that weren't going to make it, but they did. But overall, like I said, nothing crazy here. I really like the look of this roster. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you want more Packers news analysis and updates almost daily, please consider going down, clicking that subscribe button, as well as turning on post notifications to not miss any of my videos. But that about does it for this one. I'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching. And as always, Go Pack Go!